When my father uh, came here and did the design work, which was the last iteration of El Cab, he built a golf course uh, that really was a great examination, while at the same time, a wonderful club for members to play on. I think we took that concept and really expanded it and made the entrances on the ground more acceptable to the shot, as well as the bunkering more capable of being a, the player getting out of it after hit a miss hit shot. This is the 16th hole at El Cab. It's a great example of what we've done throughout the golf course. We have an open entrance on the right side. There's a bunker behind it, so you can hit the ground uh, shot into the green. The green now holds the shot. All our greens here at El Cab uh, will really hold the shot much better than they did in the past. The green speeds are faster in today's golf courses, and we have sweeps in the back of them. We have areas when you have to carry a bunker that'll truly hold the shot, and this green really didn't hold the shot before. So with the uh, restoration of this golf course, you'll find many more shots that look the same, but might play much differently. So Reese, talk to us about how the bunker work that was done, this is a good example on 16, this middle bunker used to be a little larger and the lip was much higher. And it kind of created that scenario like you talked about of shot comes into the green, well struck shot hits the green over the bunker and just off the back of the green because it can't hold off of that slope. Talk to us about how just the, what Steve Crotty did from shaping and regrading everything and making it all tie in properly together, how it helps accept those shots better. Yeah. <clears throat> the good fortune we had here at El Cab is uh, we brought in a shaper that I'd worked with on several golf courses in the past. Uh, we built a bunker style that looks windswept. The bunkers are pitched uphill toward the green so that they're easy to get out of. Uh, this old bunker used to almost be a, make the green blind. It had a big berm and it was irregular and it, it was almost too difficult uh, to get out of. In fact, the, the slope in front was very steep. And so it wasn't really that fair. So in essence, on all the bunkers here, whether it be the fairway bunkers or greenside bunkers, we made them so that you could get out of the bunker, either a long shot or take a chance uh, with a, a, a really finesse shot. Uh, but you really had a chance to recover out of the, the bunkers that we designed. And I think that's the difference in the bunkering today versus yesterday. Okay, we're standing on the 13th fairway at El Caballero. You can see the turf grass is very healthy. This is the middle of October. This is Santa Ana Bermuda grass. We have Bandera Bermuda grass in the rough. Uh, these grasses are gonna save us at least 25% of the water consumption. Uh, we won't be overseeding uh, this grass because it really benefits itself in the winter time when it's dormant. It's a really great playing surface. And so we won't have that downtime on both sides of the calendar when we're planting it and growing it in and when it's going out. The, the outlying areas, we conserved uh, the turf to some degree. Uh, we eliminated turf and wherever the olive trees, we have DG. Uh, we have mulch up there and a little DG where the other olive trees are. Again, we took out the turf to preserve the water. And I think it's uh, very, uh, very playable and very enjoyable. And it's really very attractive. I think what's so great about El Caballero as a golf experience for members, guests, good players, average golfers, is that we have a real ebb and flow. And this is one of your shorter par fours on the golf course. Uh, how it plays downhill, you have a short shot in, but then you have three bunkers in front, a very difficult uh, pin position on the left, a bailout area on the right. So there's all different ways to play this hole to accomplish your goal. Okay, we're standing on the 6th tee at El Caballero. This is a par 3, which is 217 yards from the back tee. Every par 3 at El Caballero is a different yardage and a different club uh, when you play the hole. Uh, this hole is a great example of our design philosophy and our approach on the restoration of El Cab. Uh, the open entrance really is much easier from the shorter tees than it is from the longer tees. The better player plays here. Uh, the green is probably twice the size it used to be. It's very important to hit the right section of the green in order to have a good one putt or two putt opportunity. We took out a lot of trees behind this green as we did in several places at El Cab to open up the views across the fairways as well as to look at the San Gabriel Mountains. So a lot of things were done that seemed to be small but really make a major difference in the playing of this golf course.
A lot of great changes have been made here on the number seventh hall at El Cab. Ferry bunker was put in the second landing area to make it more thought provoking for your second shot. The entrance to the green is much wider than it was. The green used to pitch from front to back, now it pitches from back to front, which is the way the classic golf holes used to be designed. We added a section on the right, which is a smaller area of the green, but you can access it by hitting to the sideboard and feeding it down. So there's a lot of thought provoking changes made here at number seven, which will make this short par five interesting and more fun to play. I first came back to El Cab about three years ago. I came here with my father while I was at college uh, and working for my father in the summers uh, when he was designing the golf course in the 60s. And so this is a very important project for me as far as I'm concerned because this was one of my father's favorite jobs because he took a course that wasn't properly done and transformed it into a great golf course at El Cab back in the 60s. What we have done here is really embellished it and made it really a course uh, for the 21st century. We've changed all the greens and as you can see the contour in the greens are, are very challenging. Green contour is a form of hazard just like bunkers just like water. So we've really got the combination of everything. The bunker on the right which makes the shot into the short part four challenging. The water which protects the left side of the green. We took that green to the back and put a new pin position up there. Uh, it's going to be a short shot into the hole, but a very demanding shot. The bunker to the right really takes care of the long hitter who really wants to hit to the right and have a shot that doesn't carry the water. So this is a really a, a sequence of holes, two, three, four, five, all par fours, all different lengths, but truly challenging and really kind of unforgettable, really memorable holes. As you can see from all the videos that have been produced, uh, on my construction visits. I've been here often. I uh, really approved all the greens designs, the bunker designs, the final contours of the greens. And now I'm here to see the finished product. Uh, Matt Duell has done a phenomenal job growing in the grass. I mean, we've got the Santa Ana fairways, the Bandera rough, and then we opened it up with less trees. And now you can really see how great the contour is on this golf course. I think what's so wonderful about the site that this is built on is the holes all fit the land and it's a very interesting topography. So they all fit the land perfectly. There's not any hole on this golf course that really seems forced. It's all so natural and that's why I think this will be a golf course that everybody's going to enjoy playing time and time again. Every green has a different angle, a different contour, a different shape and also the, the pin can be moved around on any given day so every hole will play differently on every round you play so this is a golf course will be of continuing challenge continuing interest and continuing enjoyment for all the members for years to come i'm so pleased that phil lopez and the el cab members hired me to restore and embellish and improve my father's design at el cab this is a very special project for him, and I've had the good fortune to do a lot of his courses over Belle Reve, Hazeltine, the Atlanta Athletic Club, Coral Ridge, Duke, where I played in the NCAA Championship for Yale, and many others. But I put this course in the same category as those courses. It's on a very special piece of ground. The routing that he did, the flow of the holes is spectacular. The ebb and flow of these holes is really great. The long par fours, the short par fours, the medium par fours, all the par fives are really finesse holes and all the par threes are different lengths. There's ponds on four of the holes here at El Cab, which is really a copy of what my father did at Augusta National when he added the 11th, the pond on the 11th green and he built the 16th hole, what he did at Peachtree with Bobby Jones. So I'd say this is a little mini Augusta National from that historic period of my father's design career. And I think that uh, what we've done today, we've really finished the project for him. We've graded the fairways so they hold the shots. We've repositioned the bunkers. We've recontoured and re-angled the greens so they fit today's speeds. Uh, we also made the recovery shots around the greens so much more acceptable and favorable, much like Augusta National has been doing for years and years. They've, 
they themselves have eased up the contours, changed the greens, much like we've done at El Cab. So I would have to say, uh, for the state of California, there's probably no other golf course that has 18 distinctly different design greens for the appropriate shot that's hit into them. Every pin can be moved around so that on any given day, each hole will play differently. And this golf course should be very well, well received by every caliber player because it's designed for the higher handicap, the medium handicap, as well as the very skilled player. It is a great place to play the game of golf.